Okay, so we have the last part of our cellular respiration. We have oxidative phosphorylation or our electron transport chain. So that's, this will be the last step for us guys. So uh, no need for that. So first, why do we need oxygen? So, katulad ng maraming mga organisms, we need oxygen in order to live. So, as we all know that if we hold our breath, what could happen is that kapag sobrang tagal na we could get dizzy and then black out or even cause death kapag sobrang tagal na wala tayong source ng oxygen natin. Okay, but have you ever wondered why that's the case or what exactly your body does with all that oxygen? So, we just all know na napupunta siya sa mga cells natin. Pero ano bang nangyayari doon sa loob ng cells natin? What does what do they do sa ating oxygen? Okay, so the reason behind, as it turns out, you need oxygen so your cells can use this molecule during oxidative phosphorylation or the final stage of cellular respiration. So, hindi siya immediately nagagamit during glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, and then the Krebs cycle. Actually, oxygen is being used during the third and final step of our cellular respiration. So, oxidative phosphorylation is made up of two closely connected components. That's why madalas inter interchangeable lang tung dalawang components na ito. The first one is our electron transport chain and the other one is chemiosmosis. So, oxidation or oxidative dun sa phosphorylation natin, yun yung electron transport chain. And then chemiosmosis, that would be your phosphorylation. Okay? So, yung pag-pass through ng ating mga electrons, ayan, sa from one molecule to another, yun yung electron transport chain. And then, for chemiosmosis is the formation of our ATP naman tayo. Okay? Because of a certain gradient. Ayan. So, where does oxygen fit into this picture? So, oxygen sits at the end of the electron transport chain na kung saan it accepts the electron and picks up protons to form water. So, yun yung nangyayari sa ating um, ano bang tawag dito? Sa ating yun yung nangyayari sa ating um, oxidative phosphorylation. So, yung oxygen natin siya yung mag accept ng electron na mga kinuha natin later on doon sa ating um, glucose. Okay? And it will pick up protons dahil nga may electron na, na kasama si oxygen. It will pick up protons in order to form water molecules. So, kung walang oxygen doon para mag accept ng electrons, kung kunyari hindi humihinga, the electron transport chain will stop running. So, titigil yun kasi walang mag accept doon sa electron na pinapasa doon sa iba't ibang molecules. And ATP will no longer be produced by chemiosmosis. Kasi ang ATP natin, di ba naproproduce lang siya because of the gradient? But since walang tumatanggap ng electrons natin, hindi rin tayo magproproceed pa sa next na step na kung saan magmove yung hydrogen ions from one, uh, from the matrix papunta sa intermembrane space. Okay? So, without enough ATP in return, cells cannot carry out their actions that they need to function. Okay? So, that could lead to the death of an organism. Kaya kapag walang oxygen ang katawan natin, hindi magpa-function. Eventually, our body could die. Okay, so let's proceed with our electron transport chain first. So, ang electron transport chain natin is meron tayong involved na four large complexes labeled, labeled as 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ayan. So, in eukaryotes, many copies of these molecules are found in the inner mitochondrial membrane, katulad ang nabanggit ko kanina. And then, of course, sa prokaryotes natin, they are just found in the plasma membrane, sa cell membrane lang nila meron kapag sa prokaryotes. Pero pagdating sa eukaryotes, it's happening in the mitochondria, specifically in the cristae or in the intermembrane, uh, the inner membrane, inner membrane, I should say. Okay, so ito na yung complex 1, complex 2, complex 3, and complex 4. So ito na yung intermembrane, inner membrane natin, sorry. So nakasandwich 
sa loob nila yung ating mga complexes. Okay, so as you can see, uh, meron si NADH natin at si H2 dito. Hindi nagkakaroon ng pumping ng hydrogen ion sa mga yan. Okay? So from the diagram, all of the electrons that enter the transport chain come from NADH and FADH2. Katulad ng nabanggit natin kanina. So, NADH from glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, and Krebs cycle. And FADH2, galing lang siya sa Krebs cycle. So, what happens during ETC? So, in the matrix, yung NADH na nabuo during the citric acid cycle, pyruvate oxidation, glycolysis, yung mga yan ay magde-deposit ng electrons niya sa complex number 1. At once na mag-deposit siya ng electron sa complex number 1, malamang sasama doon ang hydrogen ion natin. Kaya babalik siya sa pagiging NAD+. Plus. And it's going to release a proton into the matrix. Okay? So, 5H2 on the other hand, deposits electrons in complex 2. Okay? Turning it into fat and releases two hydrogen ions. Uh, remember guys, ang NADH mag start kay complex 1 mag-deliver. Sa so FADH2, kay complex 2 lang siya mag-start mag-deliver ng electrons. Okay. So, the electrons from complexes 1 and 2 are passed to the small mobile carrier Q. So, once na naipasa na sa complex 1 at complex 2 yung mga electrons natin, dadiretso siya kay mobile carrier Q. Mamaya, mahita niyo ulit yan. And then, carrier Q transports the electrons to complex 3. Pasa-pasa lang kaya electron transport chain. Which then, after complex 3, it passes to cytochrome C. And lastly, cytochrome C passes the electrons to complex 4. Which then, si complex 4, ipapasa niya na kay oxygen yung mga electron. Okay, na kung saan, pag nakuha na ni oxygen yung electron na yun, it will form water. Remember that, it takes two electrons. Okay, oxygen and an oxygen molecule and two hydrogen ions to form one water molecule. So, complexes 1, 3, and 4 use energy release as electrons move from a higher to a lower energy to pump protons out of the matrix and into the intermembrane space. So, ito na yung magkakaroon na naman tayo ng proton gradients. Okay, si NADH is very good pagdating sa pagdodonate ng electrons kaya nga nag start siya kay complex number 1 kaya nagiging NAD+. Because its electrons are higher in energy level. So as electrons move through complex 1 in a series of redox reactions, the complex uses this energy to pump protons from the matrix papunta sa intermembrane space. On the other hand, FADH2 have a lower energy level. That's why hindi siya nag start sa complex 1. It starts with complex 2 which does not pump protons across the membrane. Okay? Because of this bypass, each FADH2 molecule causes fewer protons to be pumped and contributes less to the proton gradient than an NADH. So, overall, what does the electron transport chain do for the cell? It has two important functions. Number one is to regenerate the electron carriers. So, we have... NADH and FADH2 magiging NAD plus and FAD once na naipasa na nila yung electrons nila. Okay, number, and next, this is important because the oxidized forms, pag sinabi natin oxidized forms, ito yun. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, NAD plus and FAD. Big sabihin, they have lost an electron. Forms of these electron carriers are used in glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. So, pag lagi silang ganito, wala nang ganito, anong pagbibigyan ni glycolysis at ni citric acid cycle ng mga electrons nila. Wala. That's why, uh, good na nangyayari ang regeneration ng electron carriers. And number two, it makes a proton gradient. Gusto natin yung pag-form nila ng proton gradient because nagkakaroon ng mas maraming hydrogen ion sa inner mitochondrial membrane doon sa intermembrane space na kung saan Nagkakaroon ng higher concentration of hydrogen ions at yun yung magkukos ng gradient na kung saan makakapag-form tayo ng ATP. 
Okay? So, pag yun na yung case natin, after the electron transport chain, nagkaroon tayo ng may daraming hydrogen ions, masusunod na yung process ng chemiosmosis. So, when we say chemiosmosis, this is the process in which energy from a proton gradient is used to make ATP. Nakabuo na tayo ng proton gradient kanina. So, yung gradient is yun yung chemina part. And then, osmosis moving from one, moving through eye membrane. And form, of course, a certain energy which is in the form of ATP. Okay? So, for instance, chemiosmosis is also involved in the light reaction of photosynthesis. So, complex 1, 3, and 4 of the electron transport chain are chain are proton pumps. So, as electrons move energetically downhill, the complexes capture the release energy and uses to pump yung hydrogen ions natin from the matrix to the inter membrane space. Yun yung ginagawa niya. So, an electrochemical gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane, wherein ang tawag natin dito sa gradient na to is a proton motive force. Okay? So, saan yun? Nagkakaroon tayo ng, pag nangyayari sa intermembrane space, dumadami ang hydrogen ions. Okay? So, sa inter... Sa inner membrane natin or sa cristae natin, mayroon tayong tinatawag na ATP synthase, just like in photosynthesis. So, dito napapasok yung mga hydrogen ions. Okay? Na kung saan, pagkuha niya is just like an hydroelectric power plant. Instead of turn, being turned by water, hydrogen ions yung pupasok sa kanya. Okay? And in turn, yung ATP synthase, ang gagawin niya, it is going to add a phosphate group doon kay ADP through the proton gradient into the form ATP. So basically, ganito yung nangyayari, guys. So what happens is, ah, tapos na yung citric acid cycle natin. So meron tayong NADH na na-produce at FADH na na-produce. So NADH will give off its electron. At once na nag-give off yung electron na yun, magkakaroon tayo ng pumping ng hydrogen ions from the matrix papunta sa intermembrane space. So NADH will become NAD+, and hydrogen ion. And then, simultaneously, a FAD H2 will deliver its electrons kay complex 2. But since si complex 2 ay hindi nagpapam ng hydrogen ions doon, ang nangyayari, pinapasa niya lang yung electrons niya kay Q. Electron carrier Q. Ganun din si complex 1, ipapasa niya kay Q. And then kay 3. C3 magpapump na naman siya ng hydrogen ions from the matrix papunta sa intermembrane space. And then pasa kay cytochrome C. And C will pass it to 4. And then 4, papump na naman ng hydrogen ions. And then yung electrons na nandito kay 4 will give off, will give off its electrons to our oxygen. And that elect uh, electrons will again, pag nakuha ni oxygen, will attract two hydrogen ions forming water molecules. At kung paulit-ulit na nangyayari yun, magkakaroon tayo ng electrochemical gradient dito sa ating intermembrane space. Meaning, there is a high concentration of hydrogen ions dito sa intermembrane space natin. And what will happen is magkakaroon tayo ng proton motive force. And that proton motive force will drive this ATP synthase to add a phosphate group kay ADP to form ATP. Okay, so generally that is what is happening in the electron transport chain and then chemiosmosis. So all in all, ang tawag natin dito is oxidative phosphorylation. Okay? Oxidative because of the continuous losing of electrons here. And then, dito naman is phosphorylation with the formation of our ATP. Okay? So, si NAD plus at saka si FAD, pupunta na naman sila babalik sa citric acid cycle and sa glycolysis para magamit sila. So, that's it for our electron transport chain.